um, there's a lot of myths and a lot of misconceptions and a lot of uh, misinformation and my main goal today is to try and give you some ideas or some clarity on what's what's the real skinny on dental implants and what they may or may not be able to uh, do for you and, and the miracles or the limitations and and uh, exit expectations and answer any questions you may have. So uh, I thank you for uh, coming in today. It's a beautiful day and uh, making the choice to be down here and uh, see us. I'm with the uh, second, I'm a DMD and the second initials by me is a fellow of the International Congress of uh, Oral Implantologists. Start here, I have, those are my offices and um, there's my website and additional information you can always, it's all in some of the things you got out. I'd be happy to answer questions or talk to anybody about anything. So uh, feel free to contact us. Um, I just wanted to play this little video to start things off with a little humor. <laughs> Somebody skydiving and watch real close. She's watch real close here. Uh, she lost something. So we don't want that to happen. Um, so that can be avoided with dental implants. What are dental implants? Um, dental implants are titanium, uh, titanium metal that uh, grade four surgical titanium. And it's the same type of implant that you have in your hip or your knee or other joints. So uh, the only difference is, is that it goes in your mouth. Um, they started you know, playing around with the dental implants, different types, which we'll get into. Uh, historically, um, dental implants have been around since ancient civilizations. Uh, the Egyptians would uh, implant uh, other people's teeth in, in uh, some of the mummifications. And uh, the Mayans were actually the first successful that we know where they, they have a jaw from an ancient Mayan it's all about a thousand years old where they used uh, seashells to replace lower teeth and they uh, carved them and shaped them and the calcium carbonate they actually they actually uh, worked so that's uh, it's kind of you know it's not a new it's not a new concept um, they're better they're more improved um, they look more natural um, we have a higher success rate but uh, dental implants really the modern history uh, has come in the last you know, the, a lot of started playing with them in the 60s uh, and uh, uh, experimenting with them and they really became popularized in Sweden in the mid 70s by a physician named Branemark. And uh, basically everything we're doing today and techniques stem from his research and his techniques. So, you know, it's, uh, we always mention him. Uh, there are some other uh, previous techniques, but uh, main thing is is um, you know new concepts and what's important in, in 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 having a dental implant and it's not as simple as just putting a um, uh, it, it, well we'll get to it. I want to just talk about this. titanium um, it's not a miracle it's not magic it doesn't get in there by just accident there's a lot of technology and that's the main part of the focus today one is to you know sort of clear things up, but a lot is to explain the technology, you know, and the innovations and what's important and what to look for, you know, when you're looking to have treatment or may require this type of treatment, which most of us, which many of us or most of us will at some point. Um, there's very few people that you know can make 70 or 80 years with every tooth. I myself already have two dental implants, so. I've been put through the process and I used them and they've served me very well. Um, so here's a regular CT scanner and uh, we've, some of us may have seen this, this is what we use in the hospital, but uh, for a, 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 a good dental implant uh, placement, um, we have these machines that we use in our implant offices and you should have one of these scans performed and it's a 3D scan of your head to know exactly where the bone is, what your bone looks like, do you have enough bone, what's the quality of the bone, and you, are, are you able to, you know, for, where are the anatomical structures, and are you able to accommodate 
a dental implant. So you can't just tell by looking in somebody's mouth. And a two-dimensional x-ray gives us very limited information. It doesn't give us, and it's, so this is um, not quite yet become uh, a legal standard of care, but uh, for within the profession, it's gonna, it's, it's headed that way. So you should always have uh, a 3D scan uh, in, or in, in most cases, if a tooth is, particularly if a tooth has been missing for a while, and that's because, or even if it hasn't, just to know, you know, if there's enough bone and where the bone is and if it's able to support a dental implant. So if we look, this is our, our tooth here. If we lose our, we just lost our tooth. Um, we can see on a 3D scan, this cross section, a regular x-ray just shows from front to back and it doesn't show us this thickness. And this shows us, uh, yes, you know, we want to see on our scan that we have a thickness of bone able to accommodate a dental implant. So what this video actually showed was, you know, at the time of extraction um, of a single tooth that's a, that has a, that has a, uh, 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 intact socket, you can put your dental implant in immediately. And uh, that's been for some time. And you can even put a temporary crown on top of it. But those are big conditions. And, you know, usually often diseased teeth have loss of bone or supporting structures around them. And that's what we'll use the 3D scan for because you cannot tell from a 2D scan what's on this side and what's on this side, just on the outsides. So I don't know if everybody's following me, but this is a front tooth and this is you're looking at the face from here. And uh, just to... Um, and yet, let me just go to the next slide. Um, so this is again showing some different kinds of titanium implants. Dental implants are usually great for titanium. We also have, uh, some people are concerned about metal and there's also now a ceramic dental implants um, made out of uh, zirconium, zirconium dioxide. So some people don't like, uh, you know, there are, uh, for people who are, you know, not, the titanium doesn't seem to have a problem and it forms an oxide coating on it immediately. And it's the standard of care. And 99.9% .9 plays today are titanium. But um, there's a lot of, holistic or type of uh, people or clinicians are concerned about having a, a metal a metal in their mouth okay. and they will select the ceramic. Um, but this, there is a problem with the strength and the long-term durability of ceramics. So very few are placed in the United States and they're mostly placed in other countries. So this is just going through a little history um, in the old days, we had something called a subperiosteal implant, where they just, something set on top of the bone and there's these little posts coming out. Uh, they're very rare to see, it is a technique, but uh, they, they do have big problems, and if you have a problem, you've got this whole thing. So that's called a subperiosteal implant. Um, and then, after those came something called blade implants, and they were fairly successful, but that's a lot of, uh, you know, you have to make this whole slot to get this one implant sticking up. So really today, basically what we're talking about are screw type or endosseous implants. And that's what, when we talk about dental implants, you know, what we'll be talking about today is this. Well, they still make these and they still make the other ones. They're not really used in a significant extent. So this is um, <coughs> critical. Uh, message that I want to give you today is what type of implant you have. Uh, the type of implant is crucial to the long-term success and durability and what the difference is, these are, these are all similar, but I like this diagram. What you see here is a textured surface and we'll get into this a little bit more in a few more slides, but the texture of the surface is critical to how the bone cells of your body attract and grow into the implant. And that affects long-term durability. And not only the way the bone grows in, 
but also the way that the soft tissue connects. So why is this important? Because there's a lot of um, things that look like small little cylinders, and these are small titanium cylinders, but they don't have a good surface, and if they don't have a good surface, the failure rate dramatically increases. So compared to a polished surface, and there's uh, most research in millions and millions of dollars, and we're constantly trying to improve the surface. The surface is close to at least 99% success rate on most of these implants now. Now it's, you know, looking for quicker, better adherence to the bone, but uh, we pretty much have the surface down. And there's several major manufacturers of implants. So when you go and you ask and you're talking and you may get different consultations, it's very important to ask what type of implant, what brand are you going to put in my mouth? Because you don't want to pay for a Mercedes and get a old, you know, VW Bug. Okay, there's a huge difference in the surface technology, and the di and and a lot of people are, you know, there's price, there's cost difference, huge cost difference to the clinician placing it, and you know, there's cost incentive. There's people out there making clones, knocking things off in foreign countries, and, and you're, you know, they get through ADA, and they're not as good. So the major companies that have millions of dollars in research and also guarantee their implants so that if there's any problems, so they stand behind them, so that if something failures, uh, if there is a problem, you know, in this 1% or whatever situation, they will guarantee the replacement of the implant and you're working with your clinician at no charge. That's the whole kit and caboodle. That is usually uh, provided you don't do anything, um, you know, uh, you you, may, you do your expected maintenance, but the uh, the manufacturer, no, that I shouldn't say that. That has to do with you and the, for my patients, I will, I stand behind my implants because I choose one of the top manufacturers. Let me just mention them. Uh, well, we'll go through here. Um, this is this is the implant again, and this is the gum. This is a, you know, this is the titanium part in the bone. This is a, uh, underneath, this is a crown, <coughs> just like a crown that would go on any other tooth. And this part here is called the abutment. Now we saw some other abutments on that. Let me just uh, go back to that other slide for a second. So this is, you know, this is called an external hex um, implant. These have failures. We don't use these anymore because of mechanical properties. There's uh, too much uh, uh, pressure on the screw, and what happens is is that the the, the screw will just break, and the crown and this part, the crown goes on top of this. These parts are called abutments. That's an abutment. That's an abutment. That's an abutment. And this is the implant body, so they all look kind of similar. But the critical thing, and maybe a little bit diff difficult for you to conceptualize, I'll show you in future slides, is that this one has what you call an external connection, and these are, you know, most often cloned. And the uh, some of the patents have worn out, but the, the 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 first thing that was a great revolution for us in implants and having durability and not having problems is having um, these what we call internal connections because these internal connections do not fail. They do not have that problem. The screws don't break. And um, uh, so this it, you, screw breakage, implant failure, it used to be more of a problem. But, uh, and sometimes the screw could come right back out, but sometimes it doesn't and then that's a problem. So it's really, um, I, I'll, I'm, keep getting to some of these important factors, but uh, the, the way the tissue, the surface, the initial stability, the thread, there's a lot of talk about what type and pitch and size of the threads should be and, uh, and what's best for uh, long-term uh, stability.